I'd now like to introduce our first case study. We'll be hearing from Simon Deere and Rachel McKernan from the Isle of Wight team. The Isle of Wight Family Hub is a really innovative model which combines universal targeted and intensive early help. And they've also embedded services like Job Centre Plus and Citizens Advice within their hub. So it's a really interesting model. So Simon and Rachel, over to you. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for the opportunity for us to share our experiences and to learn from yours. Uh, my name is Simon Deere. I'm the service manager for um, strategic development and commissioning, and I've worked for the Isle of Wight um, for nearly 20 years working kind of within this area. Hi, and I'm Rachel McKern, and I'm the Assistant Director for Children's Services for Bernardo's in Hampshire and Isle of Wight. And it's been our pleasure over the last six years to work in partnership with Simon and the Isle of Wight Council to uh, shape and develop uh, what we call family centres here on the Isle of Wight, because that's what families told us they wanted them to be called. So we're going to, we've been asked to give you a, um, a snapshot of the journey that we've been on. Um, as a, a kind of partnership and in the development of family hubs. So Simon's going to um, start by telling you where the journey all began. Okay, we can uh, trace our uh, perhaps journey back from around 2006 when we established our Children's Trust um, and through our Sure Start Children's Centres. Um, it's very much our early help is as much about a mindset with agencies and, and organizations as well as an approach uh, and an offer and a way of working um, rather than simply a service. It's also helped us to help agencies understand if they work together as part of an early help offer through a family center, um, we can provide more support um, for families to make sustainable change than if we were working separately. I think that the part of the learning we had in the journey was children's social care were the most skeptical about what early help was, what it could do, and actually did it have anything to do with children's social care. But as we'll see through our journey, um, that actually became full circle really. So in 2013, our children's social care um, were deemed inadequate by Ofsted, um, which was, um, a shock to all but actually there were some green shoots already there from our children's trust and our early help approach and this is a quote from Ofsted um, that actually there was some positive impact in terms of the early help um, which actually started to change some of the mindset of our social care colleagues that actually there might actually be something in this early help offer through our family centres. Okay, so in 2014, we had another Ofsted inspection um, and we moved out of inadequate um, and became requires improvement. And again, I think this underlines how early help, not only is it essential for families, actually in terms of how services improve what they provide um, is essential as well. So again, Ofsted found evidence that the way we commissioned early help um, actually, you know, proved to be an effective way of providing that early help in local communities. Okay. So in 2015, the Isle of Wight Council um, uh, recommissioned their early help services, which had previously been commissioned as separate services, and brought them together. So that was the children's centres, the parenting support, early years home support, and the Troubled Families Programme. And the thinking around that was that families often experience multiple interventions at the same time, or they received handoffs. So you went from one service into another. So they commissioned um, sort of the early help hubs, they were called at that time, as three separate locality lots. And the model, which Bernardo's developed in partnership with uh, the local authority, was that there would be one family and one hub. So everything that a family would need would be um, accessible from their one family hub. And that would be through Universal, with a focus on the early years, but also um, 0 to 19, then targeted help and intensive family support and the notion around that was a universal one family would get everything they needed from one hub which would be a known and trusted place in their community 
a targeted intervention. Uh, one family would access support through one hub and they would have one plan, which is the integrated um, targeted early help plan. Um, and the Isle of Wight already had in place um, a good be bedrock in terms of um, professionals trained to complete, as they were known, CAFs at the time, Common Assessment Framework, but now known as Early Help Assessments. And then at an intensive level, um, one family would have one hub, one plan, but they would also have one dedicated worker who would um, ensure that all elements of that work was being undertaken. So unlike a lead professional who would coordinate the um, family support worker from within the early help um, hub would actually um, um, undertake that work with the family to a goal orientated and outcome focused family plan. And right from the start, as Andrew mentioned, in services were embedded firmly within um, the early help hubs. So health visiting, midwifery, job centre plus, CYP counselling was brought in and other third sector providers. And in order to ensure that everyone brought in and everyone understood the benefits, we ensured there was a family support worker for every school in the locality. And we had a link to every preschool setting to ensure that everyone um, was kind of aware of the new model, but also of the interlinkages and the ways that we could work together. And that worked really well. Um, uh, there were, it was not without teething problems and bringing everybody on board to recognise that they're part of a wider early help system was at times challenging. Um, but we made good progress in those first couple of years. In 2017, um, we experienced the requirement for a 15% reduction in core funding, which I'm sure is something everybody um, is um, aware of. Um, the Kind of necessity sometimes to uh, cut your cloth but actually necessity can be the mother of invention and so we took that time to look at what was really working well in the current model um, and then uh, develop opportunities to build on what was working and innovate when necessary um, so we worked outside existing commissioning relationships and we brought in additional funding which supported the early help offer from the CCG around neurodevelopmental support. And at the same time, Isle of Wight Council established the Early Help Board, which was multi-agency to steer the future and our first Early Help Strategy and Action Plan was published. So with regards to the changes we made, we targeted our resources at that point so that the paid resource within the uh, service offer was delivering targeted interventions and a universal offer was delivered by an enhanced volunteering service and by building community, um, community capacity and utilising the assets that were already there in our communities and ensuring that they were brought into the early help comprehensive offer. We also affected cost efficiencies by centralising the management of the three hubs into uh, one central management, ensuring there was dedicated management for um, centre, but also the targeted early help and intensive family support, and only opening our spoke sites when they were needed. And we also innovated, so being aware that the wider children's services um, landscape were not so confident in completing early help assessments or undertaking um, the role of lead professional, we introduced what we call virtual lead professionals who support and build capacity and facilitate that out in the wider community. We worked with health partners to establish direct referrals from GPs into the family centre. And we also um, increased co-facilitation to make sure that um, we were working alongside our partners. Simon. Okay, through our partnership arrangement that we have with Hampshire County Council, um, they, their director is our director. And so in terms of the senior management team, um, with a lot of hard work meant that we actually got to good in our last inspection, um, which is you know, fantastic for families, but also uh, for us as well. Um, so we were- uh, Sorry, Simon, that's your two minute uh, warning. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, so the um, impact of our early help offer, you know, was really evident through the inspection. Um, so for us, it meant that we'd achieved the the approach where we weren't having this tumble dryer of families going round and round in terms of referrals, waiting lists, assessments. Actually, you know, that was the evidence that our early help offer, you know, was good. Okay, Rachel. 
so we've continued from that and built on that and looked at how we can integrate more into the offer. Uh, um, we've called this thinking and working outside the box. So we've incorporated the parental conflict programme within the uh, family centre and the wider early help um, offer. Um, we are now ACE aware and trauma informed and responsive across um, early help services and we've worked collaboratively to draw on additional funding that we can bring in so we have two mental health support teams which will sit in that wider early help offer that it will due to deliver in um, January um, and we also worked very closely around ensuring there wasn't a cliff edge of support with the ending and the tapering out of the troubled families phase two and we've also worked extremely hard in COVID-19 to ensure that families um, access support and that is still ongoing. We have maintained all elements of delivery through a blended and alternative offer. And just to conclude in the last 60 seconds, our next step is to ensure that all agencies and services understand what their contribution is to the early help offer and that that is delivered through family hubs so whether that's adult services um, or, or any other service so that's our next step so thank you <laughs>